With us today is Dr. Orville Disdier, Executive Director of the Puerto Rico Institute of Statistics. Thank you so much for being with us today. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. First of all, you've been recently confirmed, officially, mm -hmm. um, after about a year and a half, right, yeah. of being the intern. A year and two months. A year yeah. and two months, you were interim executive director yeah. of an agency that you already know very well. Um, mm -hmm. When did you start? And, you know, talk to me about how that interim phase worked out and what your plans are now that you're officially in the chair. Thank you. First of all, thank you to invite me for this awesome podcast. And I was in the, I, I was starting the Institute on 2008 and the act number 209 of August 28, 2003 created the Institute. However, um, on 2007, it's officially started with the um, designation of the first executive director. And then I, a year later, I, call, I went to the institute as a project manager. Okay. And then uh, as a project manager, I started to work with a lot of projects, but especially uh, in projects regarding education and health statistics. Okay. So then I... Uh, work with several agencies like the Department of Education, the Department of Workforce, um, the Department of uh, Social Affairs in Puerto Rico, the Department of Familia. And also I started to do a lot of research regarding the use of data to make projections. Mm -hmm. For example, how many students um, will be in the future in the Department of Education, the Roman stats, and also trying to make projections about uh, dropouts in mm, school right and then i i um started to work as a, pro a senior project manager okay years later then um they uh, as a senior project manager i started to uh, have other people under my command mm -hmm. so we uh, work a lot with teamwork in the institute so we need to establish many projects and that project needs workforce right. and let many people with a lot of knowledge programmers for example um, people that can make uh, collaborative agreements with other agencies like people that can go there to the agencies and work hand by hand by hand with other people mm -hmm. and then i i um started to work as a uh, a executive direct acting executive director in the institute and then uh a year and two months later um now i am on the official the executive director of the institute and you did go through the hiring process right as yeah. well you did apply and you went through the interview process as did all of the other candidates that yeah that were in that cycle yes yes uh the cycles was it, it was first of three phases. Three phases. Three okay. phases. The first phase was um, just some questions and some uh, uh, informal interviews. We sent a lot of documents, some papers mm -hmm. to to these um, to the board of directors, and also then uh, we have some other another interviews with this special committee that they created, a committee that was. Um, composed of people of different backgrounds and external right and external people that committee. were completely um independent from the institute right? independent from the institute okay. people from universities people from private and public universities people from the states also okay. um people from local universities expert in statistics oh, and so all of them external to the institute okay people are not related with the board of directors yeah, because you have to be very careful about yeah. there being conflicts of interest and all of that, right? When you're choosing somebody yeah. who's going to sit in your chair. Yeah, yeah. So they uh, establish a, a set of questions and, and, and formal interviews in this case. So they uh, uh, trying to know more about the, the person, not, not just the um, how uh, they they can um establish new projects for the institute but also how they are in personal issues or 
in the ethics, sure. the background. You're dealing um, with a yeah. lot of personalities when yes. you're, when you're yeah. at the top. So speaking of that, your projects, mm -hmm. have you already outlined uh, specific um, projects that you want to work on now? Yeah. Maybe in the sh short, middle, and long term. Can you share some of those plans with us? Yeah. Fortunately for us, the Board of Directors established a new, new three-year strategic plan for the Institute. And that plan is ongoing right now. Okay. So we are in the first year of that new plan. So the plan established several projects for the Institute. The first one is uh, establish a new administrative structure for the Institute. Okay. So the Institute can then uh, establish new ways to collaborate with the agencies because the Institute has the, the, the need to establish collaborative agreements with the agencies. To be able to get data. To be able to get data. Right. And also, um, we have to establish the public policy in statistics for the Puerto Rico. So we need the information from the agencies. We need collaboration from them. But also, we have to um, establish an, an administrative structure that can um, uh, help the people in the institute to establish that. But right now, you said you have 12 people working at the agency. Yeah. Is that enough? No, it's not enough. We have 12 people and just one person for um, informatic systems. Okay. So just one person for all Puerto So what Rico. does that mean? So that means that we have to choose the projects very careful, and we can uh, help everybody at the same time. Okay. So, so what's first? Well, first, we have to um, establish uh, collaborations with... Uh, the, the with agencies that are are producing economic data right now. No, but what I mean with what's first is yeah. what's the first project? Which agencies, oh. for example, are you going to be working with first? Well, first of all, we are working with the Department of Education. Okay. Then we are uh, also working with the Department of uh, Economic Development. Right. So that's big right that's there. That's a big one. Right, right. Oh, that's, okay. Those two are the first ones, right. the most important. And then labor? I, I'm, I'm thinking the Department also of the Labor. Also the labor, the labor yeah. statistics, uh, labor workforce, and uh, all statistics related to that uh, topics are also a, a priority for us. But they are attached with other projects in the Department of, of uh, um, Economic Development. Okay. Yeah. So in education, for example, what exactly are you looking for first? Like how many students there are, how many there will be? What, what are some of the projects with that agency itself? We are trying to establish new ways to uh, make projections mm -hmm. about how many students will be uh, in the future in the municipalities, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, in, because we, the Secretary of Education wants to know if how many schools it will be uh, needed in the future by municipality because the resources that we have are very scar scarce sure. and we need to uh, distribute the, the resources very um, uh, scientific, sure. you know, in a scientific way. And also, um, uh, some schools in, the, in Ponce, Juanica, that's what I was going to say. It's, right it, now. It's, so, yeah. it's, it's obvious that some of those schools in yeah. those so south and southeastern towns, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of them may not reopen. May not reopen. So we, we want to know m with, with more accuracy where the students are going to be in the next, in the future. And to maybe, maybe we have to move them to other municipalities. Okay. So. We are trying to establish new ways to make that projections using uh, economic variables, okay. demographic variables, and trying to uh, uh, do it that for the next two or three years. Okay, and yeah. how quickly can you have the first results? Do you know? Maybe this year or the start of the next school year? Or? Probably this year. This year, yeah, okay. Um, um, it's important to yeah. know that, right? I mean, I, I think that we could have some uh, idea of of that projections maybe for October this year. Okay. Yeah. And then I guess another important projection is migration. Yeah. Are you working on that actively or is that something that you're going to be restarting? How's that going? Yeah. Um, we have a, dem a, a demographer in our team. It's Alberto Velasquez. Mm -hmm. He's, um, he's um, doing that modeling. She's okay. Some, uh, Projections. He using all the information that he has from the uh, Census Bureau, 
Okay. And we publish that. We make a special publication once a year where we publish estimates right, right, monthly. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And so do you have the latest numbers of, you know, migration? Do you have them with you by chance? Not right now, but I can um, look for it's, the It's always interesting. You. Yeah. And then speaking of that, um, you have the census. Yeah coming up actually you've been working on the census for yeah. a couple of months now but yeah. but last week you were at a press conference where you actually talked about dates yeah. and and the steps that you're taking next so can we talk a little bit about that i think one of the dates that was mentioned was march 15th march that's 15th. when the door-to-door -door yeah. process begins yeah. right yeah. so can we talk a little bit about that yeah the census is uh you know is is once every 10 years and uh, it's a count of every resident in the United States, including Puerto Rico. And also it, it counts uh, our population and households, providing the basis for a lot of things, very important things, uh, such as reporting the congressional seats mm. that each stage will need, but also for Puerto Rico, the, the distribution of, of federal funds. Right. And uh, this is the most important event in statistical issues or in statistical events in any society. Right. Uh, so it's very important because you have to you you have to make sure that everyone is uh, is aware of this, that everyone everyone knows the importance of this, because you want to count all people. Right. Nobody uh, must be af afraid of this because this is for. Uh, obtaining more uh, money, more f federal funds for a lot of uh, needs that we have. For example, new streets, mm -hmm. or we, have, we need to repair the street, we, we, we need new schools, we need um, health services, we need more social services, better social services. So this is very important for that. And uh, the census we start in March 15, the process mm -hmm. of counting. And that's the door-to-door -door uh, process, door -to -door right? Door-to-door process. How does that work? Uh, yeah, um, they, they, they go to the, um, to the house of people and the, the houses, and they uh, identify the building, the house. Mm -hmm. So also they ask for people there, if, if there are people living there, if they, this is a family. So they uh, send them a, they um, send them a, papers that mm -hmm. they have to fill. Uh, they, they give them the papers there. They give them the okay, papers there. Okay, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. How yeah. many people have been hired by the census to do this work? Well, uh, the last number that I um, confirmed with the people from the census was 18,000 people. Those are the people that are going to go house to house, yeah. door, to door. door to door. Are they identified? Yeah. Okay, because that's another thing. Yeah, they people identify. Are, okay. uh, you can call also the census or... Okay. Uh, there's numbers that you can call telephone numbers of, to make sure if the, if that person is a, a person that worked for the census. One of yeah. the one of the um, red flags, one of the yeah. things that people were concerned about was a question that was supposed to be included in the census about oh. um, citizenship. Right? Yeah. Was that question finally included? No. 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 So. So that's something that people don't need to worry about. Don't need to worry about that. They can answer and not be afraid that they'll be shipped out if they're not. No. Nope. Okay. Good. Because that was one of the. The one census of the is protected by law. It's protected by the constitution. So nobody, including the president or all the people, nobody can ask for information of personal identifiers or okay. trying to find if you are an alien right. or a resident. Right. right. Oh, so that, that was that was something that people were yeah. very concerned about. Yeah. Okay, so somebody comes to my house. Yeah. I live in a condominium mm -hmm. that that has a gated, you know, it's a gated community. Yeah. How do they get in? Because you yeah. can go to every house that's out there, but what about me that I live in a condo? Yeah, um, there's uh, some kind of agreements with the board of directors of each of condominium, the, of each condominium, okay. or any uh, kind of resident that is protected or that is. Uh, with uh, a gated, gated yeah. community, gated yeah. community, and they have some agreements with them, and they should uh, be safe with that. Okay. Because they have all the information. The agreement is with with the census, so okay. it's uh, once again, yeah, it's official. It's, a, it's official. Sure. It's a federal uh, entity 
that is protected by law and the constitution. So okay, yeah. so the surveyor knocks on my door. Mm -hmm. What am I going to expect from them? They're going to introduce themselves. They're going to give me paperwork. Are they going to ask me questions? Well, for example, they, they can they can uh, ask you questions there, or just uh, leave the papers with you. Okay. And then you can send them by email. Okay. You can send them uh, through the internet. You can fill it oh, through okay. the internet. That's, okay. That's, that's it can be done feature. online. Yeah, okay. it can be done okay. online. Or uh, you can also call by okay. phone and, and complete the form by form by by the telephone. Um, but also, uh, the person can interview there, you there. And yeah. so, what happens if you leave the papers with me and I don't fill them out? Well, they, do you have a do you have a way of knowing that I didn't fill them out? For yeah, example, they have the way to know that, and they probably going to visit you again. Okay. Yeah, because uh, another thing is uh, that you have to fill it. By you law. have to. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you have to. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so you know, yeah. listener, that it's by law <laughs> yeah. that you have to fill this paper out. Okay. And so how long is this process going to go on? It starts um, March 15th. You said Census Day was April 1st, yeah, which is yeah. funny because it's it, April Fool's. It's but April Fool, yeah. How long does this process yeah. go on? So we start in, in March 15th, but the, the official day is April 1st. Okay. Uh, April Fool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> April so. Fool's Day, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But it's not a joke. It's this is really joke. happening. It's okay. very happening. And it's, it's official. Okay. And that's the day where everybody has to, or, or must, uh, we are trying that, that date, everybody uh, talk about the census, make some uh, maybe meetings in the in in the community, make meetings in the office, okay. talking about the importance of the census. So that census day. Okay. But uh, the activities we keep going on until June. Until June. Yeah. Okay. Until June. And so, when after June will you know the numbers? When will the numbers start coming in? Well, uh, it, it would take more than a year, probably. Really? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because they have to uh, establish some preliminary numbers, and they they have they they also a a a a date where I don't remember the date right now, but where the municipalities can uh, uh, plan the census that maybe the complaint to the census that maybe some people are not uh, are in some special communities that they don't receive the visits of the of the people mm -hmm. from the census mm -hmm. uh, so they can complain about that they may think that no people have been counted okay uh, so there's, there's several steps later okay but but it's normal because it's, it's just to make sure that everybody is uh counted is, for is counted for and puerto rico even before everything started um gaining traction for the census it was already said that puerto rico is special because of the way the addresses are mm -hmm. because of the way the streets are mm -hmm. you know named or go and that still stands and i i saw i think perhaps during your press conference mm -hmm. um recently that um the earthquake also mm -hmm. added to that level yeah. of complexity um, yeah. for Puerto Rico. What happens in those towns where maybe the house um, is no longer there or, you know, it was knocked over or knocked out by the earthquakes and that people left? How do you, how, how is the census going to deal with that special situation? Yes, but the census, uh, if, if the house is no longer there, they going to uh, get it out from the, from the list of houses and they going to move to the next house and also they are going to look for that family okay that the family that had not been is not there anymore so they can ask the neighbors about that family if they know where are they okay. and they i can can go to other places looking for that family and the, is the if the families are in some uh, uh, a new uh, community or, or a shelter even or a shelter mm -hmm. they can go there okay. and count them in that place so they will be counted wherever they are wherever that, they are that's yeah. what i was going to say what if they move from guanica to san juan yeah well in san juan is when 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 the the census people uh the persons go there and they uh, count them if they are in san juan but there's going to be no problem there because they probably will be in, in a house that is is uh it's a good house it's mm -hmm. a it had not been destroyed by the earthquakes. But I guess maybe my question is, okay, Juanica, for example, mm -hmm. there was a report not too long ago that a thousand families have left. So the census will definitely confirm 
the popu- you know, populational change in Guanica, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be able to compare that perhaps 10 years ago yeah. Yeah. to the most recent. The, the, the population and the houses. And the houses, yeah. okay. So they have to uh, remake the maps. They have to, re- okay. Yeah, they have to remake the maps. So that maps would be uh, useful uh, in the next 10 years. Right. So uh, they have new maps, new, new houses, houses distribution. They're going to uh, get rid of all houses in the map. So it's, it's very important because they are going to use that for also for other um, surveys that okay. they do during the years. Right, right. Yeah, for the next years. Okay, so that's going to be happening. That's yeah. important for people to be mm-hmm. on the lookout for and to fill out mm-hmm. because, as you said, it's by law. It's yeah, a, it's by it's law. a legal responsibility mm-hmm. that uh, people have. Now, let's go back to the Institute. Um, what does the Institute need? Have you been able to assess well, what the yes. Institute needs to function, to do its job, and to gather those statistics that are obviously very necessary yeah. for even the day-to-day operation in Puerto Rico? What does the Institute need? That's a, a good question because maybe it's the most important question right now for the Institute. Uh, the Institute, by law, is supposed to, to uh, be, uh, the, the government is supposed to assign the Institute $3 million each year. Okay. But right now, uh, the, the, the Institute only has one point, $1.6 million. Oh, half. Yeah, half the okay. budget. Huh. Okay. And with that, it's very difficult to right. to you know to make um, new projects to to accomplish what we should do to, to uh, by law fulfill by by the by law, law. Yeah, to right. fulfill the law. Mm-hmm. And the most important thing right now, as any other agency probably now in Puerto Rico, is to try to get the the budget that we need. We need more money. Mm-hmm. And we are uh, looking for new ways to have more money. Okay. Uh, in this case, the institute has the power to uh, uh, establish agreements with private sectors, have the power to uh, establish new projects that can get external funds. So we are working very hard in that. So you would be that. able to get federal funding, in other words. Federal fun- funding and also local funding. We can. For example, uh, bring services okay. to uh, non-profit sector, mm-hmm. bring services to uh, other agencies and get paid for that. Okay. So we can get more money. And, and is that can... something you're planning on? Yeah. Okay. Right now we are uh, making, um, uh, may- maybe we have, uh, we be able to establish new collaborations in that way with, uh, in this case, we are working with the Department of Education. We are working with uh, the uh, the police department. Okay. So we can maybe get more money doing services, special services, and also we are we are uh, we have a list of possible federal uh, grants. Grants, yeah. yeah. And we are trying to to get those grants. Okay. Have we you applied? Ready. Yeah, are you we applied? are applying okay. right now. Okay. We are. Um, uh, uh, for example, this morning I was looking for a special grant about violence, mm. about statistical uh, statistic issues about violence, about uh, deaths. Which we about, need. Yeah, we, we need. Puerto Rico needs. Yeah, right. And uh, we hope that we can get more money uh, applying for the grants, and maybe we can. And is is uh, the three million dollar budget enough? Well, uh, right now, if, if you had it, if you yeah, it, if you had it. It would be enough. It would be. It okay. would be enough. Uh, we can do a lot of things with that. Yeah. Are you thinking of hiring more people or perhaps people, you know, as, as you get grants, perhaps hire people to work on those specific projects? Uh, or how would that go? Do you need more people? We need more people. We, we uh, maybe if we get those dra- grants, maybe we can get uh, what, what it called in uh, um, that more money that we, we, we get, we can... Uh, get more people that support the projects right. and also support all the projects in the institute. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need people. Uh, we need more programmers. You what would be your one, ideal number? You have twelve now. How many do you need? We need uh, at least we need two uh, people specializing in informatics. Okay. 
and one special uh, and one people that can do coding and programming. Okay. Because, so that's three more. Yeah, three more. Okay. Yeah, three more. At least three more. At least three more. And one uh, uh, person specialized maybe in uh, several topics such as uh, statistics of cultural issues, mm -hmm. statistics of, of sports statistics. It's strange, but... Uh, no, you know, Puerto Rico yeah. lives on that stuff. Tourism, yeah. for example. Tourism. Um, yeah. Sports is important. Um What you're mentioning about crime, that's yeah. important because yeah. um, I, from what I understand, if you have those numbers in place, you can the island can get even more funding yeah. you know, to be able to deal with yeah. uh, social and economic issues, yeah. right? Uh, uh, the, the, the statistical information, the data are the basis or usually of when you um, are trying to get a grant, you need those bases you need the information the basic information and, and uh, for in my experience uh, there's a lot of grants that we fail to to uh take granted because we don't have the basic information right. to support what we are trying to um to do in the project so that's where the institute comes in yeah if you have the right numbers or the appropriate you know the the specific numbers yeah then that sets off, you know, a chain of possibly, you know, more funding for other agencies, right? Is that, is that, that, is yeah, that correct? That's right. That's correct. And that's why we have a special service in the Institute is, uh, it's a service of a, a question service that we call preguntas. Mm -hmm. It's a service that people can go there and ask questions so we can answer them very fast, okay. very reliable. Um, right now we have a, a, a website is preguntas mm -hmm. um, dot estadistica dot pr okay and that site you can ask any question and will people get the answers yeah okay. people get the answers because <laughs> sometimes yeah. you, you know people ask questions and they they you get lost a, in a, the pipeline a new dashboard that we uh, can okay. see in life okay what is happening if someone asks a question I can see it in okay. that dashboard I can see who is answering the question in my team on um, how much uh, time it took him to or her to, to, answer. to answer the question. One of the, the things that has always been challenging, and I, I've been covering business for more than 20 yeah. years, is getting uniformity yeah. in, the, in the numbers. S yeah, standardizing the information. Is standardizing the yeah. information. Is that something that the Institute would yeah. be able to do or is doing? Yeah. For example, we have a national debt violence system. Uh, is uh, is a is a new system that we have in the institute that is looking for data from the Department of Education and from the Police Department. For example, uh, f uh, it's about violent violent deaths. Okay. And we are Again, yeah, trying okay. to standardize the numbers so we can compare the information in a standardized form with other jurisdictions of the United States. There we go. And we have we can have a, a only one only number of the violent deaths in Puerto Rico regarding or regardless uh what the police department said or what mm -hmm. the Department of Education says. So that's an example that how we can standardize a number. So it it could be more useful because uh, when we finish doing that we can establish a unique number of violent, violent deaths in Puerto Rico, and that number can be compared with other jurisdictions because we are using the same methodology. That was something that the Bureau of Economic Analysis was here to do, right? Are you working with them as well? Because yeah. they were here a couple of months back, and they met with yeah. different sectors of the economy. Yeah, the, the, the Bureau of Economic Analysis is trying to, to make an estimation of the GDP, mm -hmm. and they are using uh, also the same methodology that they use in the other states and jurisdictions, so we can compare the numbers. So, uh, it, yeah, that's right. This is also the same thing. It's trying to standardize the numbers. Right. And it's very important because you, you have to compare uh, things that are the same. Apples with apples. Apples with apples. So mm -hmm. You can compare apples with orange. And Do you think it's yeah. possible for Puerto Rican agencies to standardize their numbers? Yeah, it's possible. Yes. Okay. Because... Um, some agencies use data and information for administrative purposes, right. but not not uh, not necessarily for statistical purposes. So, so as in any country, in any place, 
you can set a, a set of rules just for statistical purposes. So we have we can have our own methodology and they can keep doing what they are mm -hmm. doing all, all, every day just for administrative purposes. But for statistical purposes, we can make a unique sex set of rules okay. so we can compare with other states. And you're giving them the rules. The Statistics Institute is giving them the rules. Uh, yeah. This is what I need. Yeah. Okay. They give, yeah. That, that's, that's, you right. know, it's coming from you, in other words. You're saying, we, the Institute, we need this from you so that we can produce this. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. In case of the Bureau of Economic Analysis, they also have their own rules mm -hmm. for co make comparisons. But we also, we, we uh, at the same time, we have some, uh, we use the information to make our own uh, indicators. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's next? Do you have anything um, yeah. immediately in the pipeline that you're going to be working on? Well, yeah. Uh, right now, we we are trying to improve the in in, the, in that the same line of the Bureau of Economic Analysis. We are trying to improve our national accounts. Okay. And to to improve our national accounts, we need to establish uh, better relationships with the board of, of the planning board mm -hmm. of Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico planning board. Right. And we right now are, are, are establishing new relationships with them. Okay. Trying to uh, make better economic statistics for Puerto Rico. Because they have many numbers. Yeah, they have many right. numbers. What do they have? Well, they... they, they ha I know they have the properties, right? The properties, they have... A, they also have a information about the exports and imports. Yeah. They have a lot of economic information. So you need to get all of that. Yeah, we're gonna Do you have even part of it or? We recently have a meeting. Okay. And we established new relationships. Okay. So I think they are they are very happy okay. with us. And so how soon should the hmm. people see, you know, results from that? I they should see results uh in this year, maybe later in this year. I think that before December. Okay. Yeah. So that means that the Institute will have statistics from the planning board in a standardized way. We hope for that. Yeah. We're hoping for that. Yeah. And those numbers will be good for local use and for, um, to compare with other jurisdictions in the mainland, right? Eventually we have, we, we need to make standardized statistics to, can we compare with other jurisdictions? But in that, in that area, the Borough of Analysis is helping a lot right with that because that yeah. also goes back to you know transparency and mm -hmm. for agencies in the states to be able to see what's happening here um and that they can understand it because again it's apples mm -hmm. and apples mm -hmm. um and that may also lead to more and better funding because yeah. they're seeing that mm -hmm. it's you know the right numbers the right numbers and there's credibility in the numbers there's credibility in numbers that's very important once again, the, the the planning board and other agencies can keep doing what uh, they need to do internally. To do internally, uh -huh. but we need we have to standardize some numbers, or some statistics, so we can use them to compare with the rest of the United States. It's important, and to get, as you said, um, to get more opportunities for funding. Yeah, that's right. Uh, also, in the future, we want to. Um, uh, uh, create a new uh, website for the institute. Okay. A better website. We more user friendly. More user friendly because I know and we <laughs> know that it's <laughs> it's hard to use. It is. It is. It's, it's a little to hard, use. even for people that know numbers. Even it's, for it's, it's, it's it's numbers, tricky. it's not smart. Mm -hmm. you, if you are looking for information, the search bar, you probably would not find a, a lot of information there. You better okay. you better go to Google and use a... Might as well Google. go to the agency in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when is that starting? Because that's important. It, we are already doing that. You're already, we are doing, already that. doing that. When do you expect that. to release the new version? Also, uh, my, my scope is at the end of the year, okay. I have a new website. Uh, we can make uh, publish that website, announce it to the public. And uh, we are... We are trying to work it in by parts, you know. Mm -hmm. First, we make this new uh, website for for questions, yeah. preguntas. Uh, but eventually, we want to s change how the web page look and the search bar. That's mm -hmm. very important. Yes, you can. Uh, my goal is that you can type any question there and you can find the answer very fast, really very quick. quickly. Okay. And we also are working in. in 
it was a secret, but I'm going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a new uh, an, a, an app for the the, the phones Excellent. and the mobile phones. Okay. Uh, an app that you can use to ask questions to the institute. Okay. So that that's. That's that's excellent. Yeah. I mean, again, it goes all out to being transparent and yeah. being open with the information mm -hmm. that brings credibility. Yeah. Puerto Rico needs that mm -hmm. right now a lot. Um, and, you know, technology is, is the way to get that done. Yeah, technology. Um, especially with perhaps the younger generation that lives on the computer and on the phone. You know, that's the way younger to get to them. Younger people don't use websites. They use apps. They they use apps, <laughs> but it you know. Yeah. But being online, also, yeah. you have to have a good presence online. Yeah, your presence. Um, your website used to have a sign up that people could you know put their email in and get in yeah. information as it was submitted. Is yeah. that still going to happen? Yeah, still going to happen. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. very useful. Yeah, because yeah. people want to get reports, mm -hmm. you know, and and just not they have to go. They receive in the inbox the information. Right. Right. So that's the still going to be a go to the people. That's going to yeah. be a feature. Yeah, it's going to okay. be a feature. So yeah. you have v nine very busy months yeah. coming up because <laughs> yeah. you have a couple of goals there that are for this year. Yeah, and and um, and we have to, uh, you know, fight with the system to get more money. You know, that's 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 that's, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. We need more money to keep our services up to date and to uh, make possible all these objectives that we have. We need, we need more people. We need more Everything resources, comes down technology, to, right. a new website, an app, that that costs. Sure, <laughs> sure. costs money and time and effort. <laughs> but it, it seems like you have the roadmap laid out. Yeah. Um, I guess we can talk in nine months to see what yeah, happened. Maybe. Everything that got yeah, done. Uh, and you'll probably announce things as they come up, yeah. I'm sure, right? Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate. I appreciate your time, and I'm sure our listeners um, will as well. And, you know, good luck to you. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to um, to talk with you, and we can talk later if you want, and any, any time. Thank you. Yeah? I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye.